Let's get started on your notes over solving absolute value equations. And we're going to talk about solutions to these absolute value equations. But first, let's review. Absolute value is a number's distance from zero. When you think about distance, it's always positive. Thus, absolute value is always positive. So in a basic absolute value equation, such as this one right here, which is the absolute value of x equals 4, we ask ourselves this question. What values of x have an absolute value of 4? What values of x have an absolute value of 4? Well, the absolute value of 4 is obviously 4. And the absolute value of negative 4 is also 4, right here. So x could be 4 or x could be negative 4 in this equation. And we have two solutions. So in an absolute value equation, you're going to have two solutions. In most cases, obviously, there are always special cases. But in most cases, because absolute value of 4 is 4, absolute value of negative 4 is also 4. So we have two different types of solutions here. So the steps to solve an absolute value equation, the first thing you need to do is isolate the absolute value expression. What does that mean, isolate? That means get it all by itself on one side of the equal sign. There's nothing outside of the absolute value bars. And then you're going to set up two equations, and I'll show you what those equations look like. And then you're just going to solve for the value of the variable. So let's get started on your examples for today. In problem number one, if we follow our steps to solve an absolute value equation, step one says isolate the absolute value expression. Well, in problem number one, it's already isolated. There's nothing outside of those absolute value bars, so we're good there. Then we're going to set up two cases, in this case, two equations. Case number one looks like this. We're just going to drop the absolute value bars and rewrite it. So x plus 7 equals 9. That's what case number one is. Or what we're saying, whatever is in here, whether it be positive or negative, its absolute value is always going to be positive. So what's inside those absolute value bars, which is x plus 7, that could also be negative 9. And the absolute value of that would be positive 9. So what you do is you set up two cases. The first one, you drop the, you drop the absolute value bars. The second one, you drop the absolute value bars, and you can multiply either side. I usually do the other side by negative 1. In this case, it's just one number, and so that becomes negative 9. And then we're just going to solve. So in this first one, I'm just going to subtract 7 from both sides, and I get x equals 2. In the second case, I'm going to subtract 7 from both sides, and I get x equals negative 16. Those are my two possible solutions. If I plug in negative 16 for x, I will get negative 9 inside those absolute value bars, and the absolute value of negative 9 is 9, so that works. If I plug in 2 for x, 2 plus 7, I get the absolute value of 9, and that's also 9. So they both work. And then we're just going to plot these points on this open number line, and it'll look something like that. It's an open number line, so you just make sure the smaller number goes to the left. In problem number two, this is an example where the absolute value expression on the left side of this equal sign isn't isolated. So we actually have to get rid of that 3 that's in front of those absolute value bars. That's 3 times the absolute value of x plus 6 equals 18. So how do I get rid of that 3? I'm going to divide. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. And I'm left with the absolute value of x plus 6 equals 6. And now we're moving on to step number two, where we set up our two cases. So the first case is just going to be x plus 6 equals 6. I just drop those absolute value bars and rewrite it. The second case, x plus 6, could also be negative 6. And then I'm going to solve these two equations. So in the first problem, x plus 6 equals 6, I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides, and I get x equals 0. In the second case, when I do the same, I subtract 6 from both sides, I get x equals negative 12. So my solutions are x equals 0 or x equals negative 12. So I might plot those on this number line, something like this. Okay, negative 12 is obviously smaller than 0, so it's going to go to the left 
of zero on my number line. Let's move on to problem number three. So here's another example where my absolute value expression isn't isolated, and it's on the left side of this equal sign. Obviously, if it were switched around, then you know you, you would do the same thing on the right side of the equal sign, but just for the sake of keeping it consistent, we've got it on the left side. So how do I undo this first? The first thing I'm gonna do is subtract two from both sides. And I get five times the absolute value of x minus one equals negative 20. And now I'm going to divide by five and I get the absolute value of x minus one equals negative four. And I'm sure you're wanting to go ahead and set up your cases. But when you really think about this, this says the absolute value of x minus one equals negative four. But wait a second, absolute value is always positive. Absolute value cannot be negative. Write that down. Absolute value cannot be negative. So in this case, after you've isolated your absolute value bars, if you get, if it's set equal to something that is negative, there's no solution. There's no number of x that you could plug in and then take, do whatever to it, subtract one from it, then take the absolute value of it and get negative four. You'll never get a negative number when you take the absolute value of something. It'll always be positive. So let's move on to problem number four. So at first glance, you're probably going, hey, it's negative. Nope, can't be negative. Well, this negative out in front of your absolute value bars is essentially negative one. And you can put a one in front of those absolute value bars if you want. But to get rid of it, we need to divide by negative one. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. And now what's on the right side will be positive five. On the left side, let's go ahead and simplify what's inside our absolute value bars. What do I do first when I simplify that expression? I'm gonna distribute this three. So three times two x is six x, three times negative one is negative three, and then plus two x. I'm not done simplifying, so I'm gonna just keep going. Six x plus two x is eight x. So I've just combined like terms here. So now I've isolated the absolute value expression. It's set equal to a number that is positive. Check, check. Okay, now we can set up are two cases. The first case, 8x minus 3 equals 5. Drop those absolute value bars, solve for the value of x. The second case, 8x minus 3 equals, well, it could also be negative 5 because the absolute value of negative 5 is 5. So we're going to have two answers here. So the first problem, or in the first case right here, I'm going to add 3 to both sides. I'm just solving this two-step equation. So I get 8x equals 8. And then when I divide both sides by 8, I get x equals 1. In the second problem over here, when I add 3 to both sides, I get 8x equals negative 2. And now when I divide both sides by 8, I get x equals negative 2 over 8, which simplifies to negative 1 over 4. Fractions are okay. You may get some ugly fractions in your problems today, like 11 over 3, or 9 over 2, or 7 over 2, or 7 over 3, or 7 over 4, and that's perfectly fine. They're just numbers. So when I plot these on the number line, I might have something like 1 is right there, and negative 1 fourth might be something like right there. Okay, I just know that negative one fourth is definitely smaller than one, so it's gonna go to the left of my number line. So now let's get into the last two types of problems that you'll see today. And in problem number five, as you can see, the difference between five and problems one through four, I don't just have a basic number or integer on the right side of my equation, I have another expression. So here's what we're gonna do. You still need to isolate the absolute value expression, which is which is already done, okay? The absolute value of two x plus eight, I don't have anything outside the, those absolute value bars, so we're good. So now we're gonna set up our two cases. The first case looks exactly like you might think it would look like two x plus eight equals two x plus one. 
I'm just going to drop those absolute value bars and solve for the value of x. In the second case, I'm actually going to drop those absolute value bars, so I get 2x plus 8 equals, and what we did in our previous examples where we changed that number to a negative, in this case, I'm going to multiply the entire side by negative 1. So it's going to look like this, negative 2x minus 1. And now we solve for the value of x. So in this case, I've got, let's do case number 1, I've got variable on both sides, so I need to move the variable to one side. But if you notice, it says 8 equals 1. So I've gotten rid of my variable, and I've ended with a statement that is false, that is not true. There's no solution for this problem. Let's move on to the next case, though, this case over here. Now when I solve for the value of x, I'm going to add 2x to both sides, and I get 4x plus 8 equals negative 1. And now I'm solving a basic two-step equation. I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides, and I get 4x equals negative 9, and I'm going to divide both sides by 4. So I get x equals negative 9 over 4, and this is just an example of an ugly number. I call it, it's just an improper fraction. But it's negative 2 and 1 fourth, or negative 2.25 for those of you who are more, you like decimals better. But this is a, an example where I may only have one possible solution for this absolute value equation, and that's perfectly fine. And it's right here, negative 9 over 4. Let's move on to problem number 6. So the first step I need to do is isolate the absolute value expression. To do that, I need to divide both sides by 4, and I'm left with the absolute value of 5x minus 3 over 3 equals 4. So now I'm going to set up my two cases, and the first case looks like this, 5x minus 3 divided by 3 equals 4, and the second case looks like this, 5x minus 3 over 3 equals negative 4. So now let's solve these two equations. This is just an example where you have a denominator and you need to, your variables in the numerator, you need to get rid of your denominator first. How do you get rid of it? You multiply it by it. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 3. That's what that looks like. And I get 5x minus 3 equals 12. And when I add 3 to both sides, I get 5x equals 15. When I divide both sides by 5, I get x equals 3. Let's look at our second equation. When we multiply both sides by 3 to get rid of this denominator, I get 5x minus 3 equals negative 12. And now when I add 3 to both sides, I get 5x equals negative 9. When I divide both sides by 5, I get x equals negative 9 over 5. So there's my two solutions. x could be 3. x could also be negative 9 over 5. That's a number that's really close to negative 2. So negative 9 over 5. It's somewhere over here. Those are my two solutions. And that concludes your notes for today over absolute value equations, solving absolute value equations. I hope it was helpful.